Okay, here we go. My company is called Compass Engine. Before I start, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. My name is Mac. Um, fascinatingly, I love games. Like, in a way that you don't understand, I love games. But I always lose at them. And this is for Kaler, much like the Canucks 94. I always fail. Um, I love making games. I genuinely and truly do. So at work, I make games for a living, and then I go home and I play games, and when I'm done playing games, I build board games for fun. I cut up wood, I paint things, I make those spreadsheets that Taylor was talking about, I get a kick out of games. And it has something to do with this puppet master type syndrome. I have some kind of control issue in my life that when I can make a game and watch you play the game, I feel like I have some kind of control of the universe. So, I'm terrible at games, and I love making games. I've been fired for more jobs than you've ever had. I don't know if it was in half big, but the scene is classic. Fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, fuck you, I'm out. That's been me many, many times. Uh, and this all led to one place, this led to me co-founding Compass Engine. I can't work for anybody else, so I work for myself. Uh, and this is our logo. <laughs> Uh, and when I'm at Campus Engine, we build location-based games. That's probably obvious that we're talking about location, but the question that sort of falls out of this is, why the hell do you do that? And there's a reason I do that, and I'm going to tell you about that, and this is the whole thesis behind Campus Engine's existence. This is why we exist. And that's because every time games become more personal, so every time a game matters more to you as an individual, the industry booms. And I've got two examples of this over the last decade. First, I've got The Sims. Lots of people have heard of The Sims. What's interesting about The Sims is that this is a house somebody built. You can see that there's nice people sitting on the bench, and there's people tending the garden, and there's a pool, and there's a sort of, you know, colonial-style California house, and that's cool. That's what people wanted to build in The Sims. Uh, and this person has a giant pentagram on their floor. <laughs> These people don't want to play games together. I think that's really obvious, but what's interesting is they're playing the same game. So what we know about The Sims is that it sold over 100 million copies. This is the best-selling game franchise on the history of Earth. And the reason is because it made gaming personal. I can play the game that I want to play in The Sims world, and you can play the game you want to play, and that's cool. We're both playing The Sims. The next version of this is Farmville. And we've all talked about Farmville. We know Farmville's not that big of a deal these days. It's a city build, and that's awesome. But the point with Farmville is this. These four people down here can play Farmville together. And the community, the relationships that they build together are very different than those four people over there. But more than that, these four people together are building a different relationship than these four people, even though he's in the middle of both of them. So The Sims allowed us to do massive personalization and customization. I want to build pink Barbie palaces, and I want to build dark portals to hell, and that's cool, we can both do that. Farmville allowed us to play the same game, but play it with our community, so that my conversation on this side of the room is very different than your conversation on that side of the room. And that's, to me, what made Farmville so successful, right? These are both instances of personalization. First, customization, and then social spheres. Uh, and then what's next? Remember, this is the thesis. When it becomes personal, the industry booms. Is the paradigm of personal is location. That's what's next. And you guys remember the Family Circus cartoons, right? These are always cute and funny, and it was like, oh, where did the little boy run? And we're chasing this trail all over the path, and that's awesome. But the real point of that is that nobody else followed the path that he followed. That was absolutely and utterly unique to him and his day. Nobody else can mirror exactly what you did and stop where you did. The location where you have been today is absolutely and utterly unique to you. That's why I make location-based games, because I'm going to get paid a whole bunch of money by making games <laughs> that are customized to you. Now, what does this have to do with all of us? Where do you live? According to my iPhone, I live at 49 degrees and 60 minutes north, and that coordinates west, and honestly, that means nothing to any of us. We don't care, right? That's irrelevant. You get a little bit more specific about where you live, and you find out you live in Vancouver. So I live on Main Street, on eight blocks east of Fraser, and to five west of Canby, and really, we still don't care at all. This isn't relevant information. I live in Vancouver. This is really neat. It's got an awesome nightlife. I can go have fancy martinis at the Diamond. I can go get beat up by kids from Surrey on the Granville Strip. I can go do whatever the heck I want in Vancouver. Um, oh, I 
I have nestled in Vancouver. It's set on the West Coast mountains near the ocean, and I can snowboard and surf in the same day. I love, I love Vancouver. Yeah. Everything's in Vancouver, but this is the Vancouver of the tourist brochures. This is the Vancouver that shows up on travel documentaries and such things. This is not the Vancouver that you and I live in. Let's talk more about our Vancouver, the drive. These people hate me. They hate me because I don't smell like patchouli, because I have short hair, because I drive a car. This offends them, and that's the drive. But this is my Vancouver, and I love these people. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> the only thing I have in common with this woman is that we're both human, but the fact that we're both human reminds her that she is like me, which is offensive to her. <laughs> Main Street, I love Main Street, I love Main Street, and this asshole hates me and I have no idea why. But it's cool me, and that's sort of just the shape of things, right? This is my Vancouver, this is location made personal. And even more specifically than that, where do you live? This is the Salty Town. This is two blocks away from here, and every morning I stop by there and I get my coffee before I show up at work and try and figure out what the hell I'm doing in my day. And I love that place. This is my favorite alley to throw up in while I'm stumbling home drunk. <laughs> That dumps is my good friend. We hang out, we have like personal moments together. <laughs> this is where I asked my wife to marry me. Three days later, this is where she said yes. <laughs> this is my Vancouver. And this is location. And you know what I'm saying? That's great, Mac. Awesome. Awesome, Mac. But what? What the hell does this have to do with games? Right? You guys remember the arcade machine? It was cool. Some of you may have heard this before. Um, it doesn't matter what arcade game you're playing. When you were done playing the arcades and you went and got the quarters and you put them in the machine and that's cool, um, you got a high score table, right? It didn't matter whether you're playing Pac-Man or Dig Dug or some game that I can't think of right now, but you were playing it and you got ranked according to that local machine. At this arcade machine, in this building where I have got community and culture and personal relevance, I was number seven last night. I came here today after work and I'm number eight. Screw you! I'm gonna go spend as much money as possible and get back to my seventh place, and then my sixth place, and then my fifth place. It's personal, it's relevant to you. I'm gonna show you a high score table from a modern video game. You got place number 375 out of 675. I don't care. That means nothing to me. Also, side note, anytime anybody puts an exclamation mark on anything, don't trust them. That's a sign they're desperate for your attention. Um, and 375 out of 675 isn't bad in the seven day record. When you're playing Call of Duty or whatever big video game you're playing on your PlayStation these days, you are ranked 350,000 out of millions. You can get better by 200,000% and you don't care. It doesn't matter to you, right? But what if, what if we were all playing Angry Birds here today, because I know we're all addicted to that thing. <laughs> And we could find out that you had the best Angry Birds score in this building, in this room. Forget the rest of the world. Ooh. Tonight, you were the best Angry Birds player here. That's interesting. That's personal. That's relevant. And that's based on my location. Because my location is my journey through life. And I can make your game more interesting based on location. I don't care what game you're playing. It's absolutely relevant. I can make location relevant to your game just with the high score table. Let alone all the crazy, crazy things I have going on. So what does this have to do with everything? Um, Chris will talk to you about how your location can be relevant to your food. And Parveen talked about how relevant location is to your friends or the friends you hope to make and stuff. For me, location should just be about fun. This is my take on it. And this is why we built Bounty Hunter. Bounty Island is available on the App Store today. You can go get it for your iPhone only, coming to an Android platform near you soon. Probably never going to make it to Blackberry or Windows, because really, who cares? <laughs> um, and the idea behind Bounty Island is that when you check in somewhere, we should make that worth your while. My favorite tweet of the last month was somebody saying, the business owner asked me to check in. Why would I do that? That's absolutely true. If you're on Foursquare, yes, you may become the mayor. And maybe that's relevant to you, maybe it's not. You're probably not going to become the mayor either way. I mean, the sort of mythical promise of a lot of these check-in services is that when you check in, all your friends are going to come running down to see you at Starbucks. 
We know that this hasn't happened yet. It's probably not going to happen in the foreseeable future. The problem with checking in, the problem with location services, if we've envisioned them so far, is that they don't add value. Like I said, Crystal's actually going to help you find something good to eat. Harveen's going to help you find cool people. I just want you to have a good time. I want you to check in on Bounty Island, and I want you to spend three minutes digging our little tropical islands, finding the goddamn treasure set so you can unlock the secret of Bounty Island, because this is what we're doing. For me, location is about fun. Thanks, Max Lavelle. You can find me there. Thanks for your time. <laughs>